Hey everyone, welcome to my channel. In today's video, we will discuss the recently published patent amendment rules. Now I have divided this video into two parts. This is the first part of the video. The second part will be published soon. So let's start with the video. All right, so first let's understand the timeline of the patent amendment rules. So if you remember, the draft patent amendment rules were published by the patent office on 22nd August 2023 where the patent office had invited any objections or suggestions one might have with respect to these amendments. And now, after around six months, the patent office have published the patent amendment rules on 15th March 2024 in the Gazette of India. So from now on, that is from 15th March 2024, these patent rules will be applicable in the patent process. So now let's explore these amendments one by one. So the first amendment is in rule 12 that is statement and undertaking regarding foreign applications. So as per the previous rule, form 3 has to be filed within six months from the date of filing the corresponding patent application in foreign countries. So if you remember, whenever an applicant would file a same or similar application in a foreign country or a PCT application, in that case, it was the responsibility of the applicant to inform the controller of such filing by filing a form 3 within six months of such filing date. But now, as per the new rule, this requirement has been relaxed. So now, as per new rule, the applicant need not submit a Form 3 every time they are filing a foreign application or a PCT application. So as per the new rule, the Form 3 has to be filed within three months from the date of issuance of first examination report. So that means that the applicant has to submit fresh Form 3 only when the first examination report is issued by the examiner or the controller. Okay, the second amendment is the controller may access patent databases for considering the status of applications filed in a country outside India. So this has been mentioned in the new patent rules that the controller can use the uh, patent databases that are accessible to him in case they want to see the status of foreign applications of a similar application which is filed in India. So the next amendment in rule 12 is that the controller can direct the applicant to furnish fresh form 3 within two months from the date of such communication by controller. So if by some reason the controller still wants you to submit a fresh form 3, then they can do that. And in that case, the applicant has to submit a fresh form 3 within two months of receiving such a communication by the controller. All right, so the next amendment is the deadline for submitting form 3 can be extended up to three months by filing form 4. So earlier there was no provision of extending the deadline for submitting fresh form 3. So now the applicant can extend the timeline for submitting form 3 by filing form 4 that is request for extension. The next amendment is made in rule 24B and 24C which is examination of application. So the previous rule was that the time limit for filing request for examination that is form 18 is 48 months from the date of filing or date of priority which is earlier. Right. So this rule has been changed. Now the timeline has been reduced from 48 months to 31 months. So the new rule is the time limit for filing request for examination that is form 18 is 31 months from the date of filing or date of priority which is earlier. So now this has reduced the timeline for submitting the request for examination. This will eventually result in the patent process getting faster. The next amendment is that this rule will be applicable for patent applications filed after the publication of patent amendment rules 2024 that is 15th March 2024. So this rule wherein you know the request for examination has to be filed within 31 months will not be applicable for those applications which were filed before 15th March 2024. So this is only for new applications which have been filed after 15th March 2024. So this is a very important point to be remembered. So the next amendment is in rule 131 that is statement of working. So the previous rule was that the statement of working which is filed in form 27 is to be filed once for each financial year starting from the financial year commencing immediately after the financial year in which the patent was granted and shall be furnished within six months from the expiry of such financial year, right? So this requirement was for those applications which were granted and it was the responsibility of the applicant to submit a statement of working that is form 27 in which the detail of working of the patent was included and the applicant had to submit such form 27 each year 
for the you know uh, previous financial year and that too within 6 months from the expiry of such financial year so this requirement has been relaxed by the new patent amendment rules now the applicant need not submit the statement of working that is form 27 every year instead they have to submit this once in 3 years and that too within 6 months of the completion of uh, the 3 years so we'll just go through the new rule so the new rule states that the statement of working that is form 27 is to be filed once for every 3 financial year so this is important so earlier it was for each financial year now it has been relaxed for 3 financial years starting from the financial year commencing immediately after the financial in which the patent was granted so this remains the same and shall be furnished within 6 months from the expiry of such period so this 6 months period also remains the same the only difference is now instead of filing each year they can file the statement of working once in 3 years all right the second amendment in rule 131 is that the timeline for filing form 27 can be extended up to 3 months by filing form 4 so there was no provision earlier to request this timeline but now it has been brought into place and now one can request the extension of timeline to submit form 27 by filing a form 4 that is request for extension of time now there has been some amendments made in form 27 as well so if you would have seen the previous form 27 in that case if your patent has worked then it was requested by the uh, form 27 to share the details of how much the patent has worked right but now there is no such information required now you just have to provide a confirmation whether it has worked or not so no information such as value or figure is to be provided if the patent has worked the second amendment in form 27 that has been made is that information whether the patent is available for licensing is to be provided so now they have added a new section in the form 27 wherein if you are willing to license your patent you can provide a tick mark saying that you are interested and if you are not then you can just put no and that means that you are not interested in licensing the uh, patent so this has been added in the new form 27 now a new rule which is rule 29a has been incorporated in the patent rules so the rule 29a is grace period this rule was not available previously in the patent rules but now they have added this new rule so if you remember in certain conditions even if you would have disclosed your invention before filing a patent application your invention would not be considered as anticipated okay this was applicable to scenarios wherein you would have disclosed your invention in a exhibition organized by the central government so in such a case if you would have filed the patent application within 12 months of such a disclosure then you know your invention would be still considered novel and patentable but now this thing has been made official and now there is a requirement of submitting form 31 which is again a new form and along with fees so there is certain fees which goes along with form 31 so if someone who has disclosed their invention in such a scenario and would file a patent application after disclosing the invention and that too within 12 months of such a disclosure then they can file form 31 along with the fees in which they can you know uh, share the details of such disclosure that when they disclosed it why they disclosed it what was the event about and if they do so then their invention will be considered novel and patentable and they get a grace period of 12 months so the next amendment is made in rule 80 which is renewal fees so previously the rule was that the annual renewal fees payable in respect of two or more years may be paid in advance so there was an option that one could pay advance fees for two or more years but then there was no benefit to the applicant but now as per the new rule a 10% reduction in renewal fees will be provided if the renewal fees is paid in electronic mode for at least 4 years in advance right so this is the new rule which has been brought in the benefit of the applicant wherein if the applicant is willing to pay advance renewal fees of uh, at least 4 years and that to in electronic mode then they will get a 10% reduction or 10% discount in their uh, total fees the next amendment is made in rule 70a which is certificate of inventorship this is again a new rule which was not available previously but now this rule has been incorporated so as per this new rule 
the controller may issue a certificate of inventorship to an inventor in respect of a patent in force on a request made by the inventor in form 8A along with the fee. So earlier there was nothing for the inventor, the, it was mostly for the applicant, right, the patent certificate, but now the inventors can also get a certificate. So if they are willing to receive that certificate, they have to file a form 8A. This is again a new form which was not there, earlier. but this has been brought in in the new patent amendment rules. So the inventor can submit a form 8A along with the uh, fees which is prescribed and for a patent in force. So if the patent is in force, they can do that and they can get a certificate of inventorship from the patent office. The next amendment is in rule 110, which is qualifying examination for patent agent. So previously, the patent agent qualifying examination was limited to patents, acts and rules. But now the patent office has incorporated the design acts and rules as well. So from now on, the patent agent qualifying exam in addition to the patents acts and rules will also include the design acts and rules. So these were some of the amendments in the uh, patent amendment rules 2024. There are more amendments which we have not discussed and which we will discuss in the second part of the video. So this was it in this session. Thank you so much.